I'm being forced against my will to vlog. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Honey, start your vlog. Start it. <laughs> you better vlog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being forced against my will to vlog. <laughs> well, what were you going to do? I'm actually going to record this because if I die, <laughs> it was Melissa Chronister. She killed me. Hey. No. I thought... So last night, <laughs> I was up really late. She was really drunk, too. No, I wasn't. <laughs> she was really no, drunk. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was up really late. Trust me, watching her try to get back to the car. Woo! <laughs> I, I was up I don't think she knew what a straight line was. I was up really late, and I was sitting out on the couch, and when the door, our bedroom door creaks, and usually it's because of our, well, it's because of just, it creaks a lot when we open it, and also, so I thought there was a ghost in the house, because he was sound asleep snoring, you were snoring, and I didn't expect him to get up in the middle of the night. And uh, apparently he did, and that's what made the door creak, but I thought it was a ghost. She thinks there's a ghost in the house, because she heard a noise <laughs> when she was drunk, when these, by the way, walls are like paper fucking thin. Yeah, they're cinder block, but they're thin cinder blocks, apparently. And two, she was heavily drunk, intoxicated. Drunk. And now three, like two she wants morning. to play with, like, magic to fuck with these spirits. So hey, once again, hey, if have, I die, hey, Melissa been, Chronister has now killed me. You haven't explained to the vlog about what I do. No. But what? you are still, I can still say that you fuck with spirits and you're gonna fuck with them Whatever. right Whatever, I thought there was a spirit in the house and I was gonna go seek it out and tell it to leave. Apparently so it's you, so I'm you going need to, to leave. die. I'm going to die. You need to leave. because I actually already spirit. asked that if she does summon a spirit, hopefully it'll possess my body so I don't have to deal with fear and I can just kill her for it. Whatever. But most likely, my luck, she'll become a demon. Her head will spin around a couple Whatever. times when, when and then they'll choke me out in the pillows. How, and I'm like, how about you? You know, about that's you, what's going to happen. How about you stop walking around the house really quietly at night? Because our house slash apartment is... So huge. Whatever. It was nice seeing you, Tyler's vlog. Whatever. <laughs> She's going to kill me. <laughs> um, oh gosh, I don't even know what I wanted to blog about, but I was forced to press start before I even had anything written what I wanted to do. I know people were like, what's written? What? Ugh. See if I can straighten out the camera there. It's all fucked up. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, real funny. Oh my gosh. Lordy. Um what to talk about? Oh my gosh. Oh, so many fun things to talk about. Um topics, topics. Topics. Uh comedy skits. Just see that god, there's so many things. I actually kind of wanted to talk about politics, but I'm going to try and stay away from that tonight because I apparently pissed off people on Facebook tonight about talking to, well, this morning. Um, just a little, so with all the school shootings going on, um, and that's not a joke. I'm not trying to joke about any of that stuff because that's just terrible stuff. Um, you know, my idea about it is, if you go back 50, 60 years ago, was there really this many school shootings? Now, I'm not saying there wasn't, because I wasn't alive back then, and I haven't researched it enough, but that's why I wanted to research it a little more. But, I mean, I don't remember, and even my you know family and stuff, none of them remember this many school shootings, this many robberies, this, many, this much crime uh, 50, 60 years ago, and yet, today, there's tons of them. And uh, a buddy of mine that... Uh, think hates me right now <laughs> posted a, a, a clip of this uh, contraption that someone made and tell me you know those things you put on your steering wheel so no one steals your car it's kind of like that but for a door and it's supposed to you slide it under the door and you pull it out and it locks in place so your door can't open and they were saying oh you can use this to prevent school shootings because you can slide it under the, the school door and prevent anyone from getting in and 
in in the little reenactment, it even shows a guy walk over the door, open, try to push it, and it doesn't open. So he walks on and moves on. And don't be wrong. I'm not saying it's a horrible contraption. I'm so not saying that. But the thing, I made a comment saying, so basically it's the same, the equivalent of locking the door. And apparently that turned into a huge, huge argument um, that I was so horrible for saying something like that because it's a device that can save lives. And I'm not denying that you can't. But the thing I would want to know is, okay, first off, a lot of times, now I'm not saying that distinctively about this company, but a lot of times those companies, they profit off of fear. So a lot of times those companies will charge large amounts of money for something that's useless. And even let's say even if they aren't charging useless, um, I'm. I would rather a school and I I have family members that are teachers. I would rather and friends that are teachers. I would rather a school invest money into investigating why we are having school shootings. And if it's a and, and if it's a matter of simply people see see you know crazy people see schools as a, an easy target, then let's have a instead of paying for a bill sending billions of dollars for air marshals that don't even work um let's have yeah, I'm sorry, but air marshals do more arresting for drunk people on a plane than they do for terrorism. I'm sorry, but that's just the honest truth. Uh, there's stats and statistics about it incredibly. But um, why not have officers at at at, at, a, at schools? And you don't even have to hire. Like, you can actually contract out. And I'm sure this organization hasn't done it yet. Is retired vets who are who would love to protect and serve their, their country still can protect a school. Um, and that gives a vet a job too. Vets who come back and want a job and they want to protect still, they can actually have an office. They can have uh, a, a site to protect their school to help prevent any uh, such atrocities. Um, and there's there's a lot of other cool things. And what I, I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm not trying to claim that whatsoever. I would love for myself and others and to sit down and actually talk about it. And we talk about it and find a really good solution because I'm sure there is one. The problem I have is too many people rely on a quick solution. They're like, here you go. This solution works. And everyone jumps in on it, says it's the greatest thing ever. And when it fails, instead of either A, working on it, or B, admitting it failed, they just move to the next project. I was told when I brought it up, that, oh, it's supposed to deliver hope. My problem with that is, I'm sorry to say, it is the equivalent of locking a door. Because if someone decided they wanted to bust down that door, they would. Because there's nothing saying someone, a large man could try and ram the door down, or even someone could try to blow off the hinges and take the door down. Now, people say, I saw in the, in the comments on it, we're like, those doors are bulky. I've seen school doors. They're never hard... Take it from someone who has lived all over the fucking world. Um, I was born in England, lived in Germany, um, uh, lived in Washington, D.C., lived in Oregon City, uh, lived in Boise, Idaho. Yes, Boise, Idaho. Love Boise, Idaho. Um, I've lived in Natchez, Washington, uh, Zilla, Washington, Yakima, Washington. I've seen doors. Not every school has a fucking bulletproof steel door. Not every school does. Why? Because not every school can afford that. Some schools have some shitty-ass doors. So I'll tell you right now, if someone wanted in on one of those shitty-ass doors, they either have to ram it and knock it over, or they just got to blow out the hinges or shoot up the door. And hell, sometimes a lot of those doors have glass. A good shotgun round will take out the glass, and they can reach in and open it up. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And I'm not trying to to shit talk that that item because it might be a good a, a cool idea. And and, and it might have, it might not even be off of fear profiteering. It might have actually been a good concept if someone came up with good intentions. But I got to play devil's advocate. Why? Because if someone doesn't people might overlook the flaws that it has. Um, and that's what I try to do is I try because how else do you make something better by testing it 
And in a situation like this, we're testing lives. I'd rather not lose lives to test it or lose money to test it. I'd rather find simple ways to test it. Like right now, just talking about it can give you ideas. It's like, you know, it kind of can. It's not a horrible idea. It's just, it's not the, is it the best idea? I don't know. I would love to talk about it and come up with a better idea. And if there is no better idea, then that's the solution. But the thing is, is people are so eager to jump and attack someone. They assume, like me, just by even mentioning that it might not be the best idea, I'm apparently just as bad as the fucking shooter. And I hate that because that's that's like politics today. Like I've explained before, you know, if everyone believes, oh, if you're not A, then you must be B. But no one thinks that, well, there is something in between. And you got to remember, there is differences. You can have an opinion. And I just, I really want to, I wish as a people we could stop and think about that. We could put ourselves on the other side of the line. I want to figure out why we're having more shootings. Um, I also want to, now, I am not someone who wants to restrict gun rights. I don't. I really, really don't. However, I actually would like to have a little bit better gun laws. Why? Because, um, I think it was about almost, a, what, was it about a year ago or so, the, uh, the shooting at a gay nightclub in, I want to say, wasn't it like Miami? Um, a gentleman posted, uh, not even 24 hours, like, I think it was almost 12 hours later, he was still able to go to his local, like, buy mart and pit, walk out of there with a shotgun. I'm not stating that we need to start restricting, but he even, he made a very, and he even bought it just to point out a factor. It's extremely easy to get a gun in the United States. And I don't, I'm not, I see this, I know I'm going to get so much bad hatred just for this, but we need to come up with a good concept. I don't want the government to be entirely in control of our weapons, but at the same time, if anyone can walk off the street and walk out of there, how well did we do a background check on that? And I'm not saying the guy walked out of there was a horrible person because, you know, he probably was a great guy. But what about that one time? And that's all it is. That's all it fucking is. That one time, that one fucking time that a guy walks out of there um, with, a, with a gun and he decides he wants to blow, uh, shoot up a post office or shoot up a, a school or a bus stop or, or anywhere, a fucking movie theater it's horrible to think that but that's how it works and the worst part about it is since we're so so eager to jump on gun and blame guns for it so everyone's like oh yeah it's all guns we have to take away all the guns there's there's some big issues with that one you take away all the guns i promise you all the all the like law abiding citizens are going to turn in their guns but what about the non law cuz people say well all the guns are registered Okay, well, no, there's a good proportion that aren't registered. Those are the illegal guns with sawed off, you know, sanded off serial numbers so people don't know those guns. And two, um, not everyone's going to want to turn in their gun. So are you going to tell me right now that we're going to go shoot up people because they're not going to give up their guns for their protection? Is that what we're going to do? Are we going to start arresting people and throwing them in prison because they don't want to turn over their gun because they want to protect their livelihood? We can't just turn in our guns. We have to be in, more intelligent about our weapons. That's what we have to do. Um, also, I hate to say it, but still, why were guns issued for us in the first place? Hello, just in case our government ever tried to take control. Just in case the United States fell. We are still a baby government. I'm sorry to say, but that's the truth. Look at every other government in the, in the world. They have lasted centuries longer than us. We are still a baby country. We barely are, we, we're test, we've been testing these waters for what, a few hundred years? We're, we're still really new. If you really compare like the Russian government or the British government, we're relatively new still. We are. And that's not to say that I expect the government to rise up. I'm not expecting total dictatorship or hierarchy uh, or any of that stupid um, nonsense. I'm, what I'm trying to say, say is, we didn't 
write the rules to bear arms so that we can hunt Bambi with an AK. We, we gave those laws so that we could protect ourselves uh, in case of whether it's the government attacking, whether it's another foreign government attacking. Uh, it's there to protect us. I believe that, honestly, we need to teach people. There should be more gun safety taught in America, more than gun restrictions. Taking away guns is just not going to solve the issue. If anything, it's going to create more of an issue because all, all then you're going to have all the people still holding guns coming out, and they're going and they're going to feel a lot safer now because oh, they don't need to worry about breaking in this house because there no one there is going to have a gun. I'm safe. I can break into that. Worst case scenario, they can have a baseball bat. Well, the baseball bat's going to do nothing to my shotgun. You know, it. it you know, it's kind of like marijuana in this country. Oh my gosh, marijuana. Marijuana is just blown up to be such a huge, huge nightmare in the United States. And it's so bad because it's not even that bad of a drug. And I'm not stating that uh, everyone should be doing it because, no, there's I've met people who are complete morons when they're high. And it's sad because that's not what weed does. It, weed doesn't create a moron. It, if, how I see it is, it's like alcohol. It makes you feel a little buzzed. Maybe sometimes it makes you even black out a little bit. Make, but here's the thing. If you're an idiot before you drink, I promise you, you're going to be an even bigger idiot when you drink. That's why we have car crashes. Drunk drivers. Killing people on the road. That's why we have... Drunk people at a bar pulling out pistols and shooting up because they get pissed at a bar fight. That's why we have uh, just stupid people when they're drunk. And that's, it's the same thing when you're high. You have idiots who are, get, who are already stupid and then they get stoned and people are like, Oh, it must be weed. Why are we blaming weed when it's clearly the idiot who got high? I have known people over the years... That are very intelligent people. I'm not going to say names because that's not fair. Not to call anyone out. But there are some intelligent people I know. Some of the smartest people I know are actually pretty big potheads. <laughs> they, they just are. But they're smart. They get high when they're either at home or in their car. But when they're working or when they're, they're never high at work. Or if they are, they make it very, they, they're able to function. They're able to do their job. Um, they're just fantastic. And also, I'm sorry to say, but why should a job, especially like, okay, in states like, okay, I get weed is le uh, illegal nationally, like federally, but like in the state of Washington right now, marijuana is legal. And that's why there's actually weed distribution centers uh, sold everywhere. Um, because they sell weed. <laughs> Look. Let's say I went on a vacation. Let's say I took a week of vacation. And I was like, well, I, a week of vacation, I want to have some fun. I want to get stoned. Let's say I did that. Let's say I got stoned. I uh, ate some edibles, had some fun, enjoyed life. I go back to work. A week, maybe two weeks into work, uh, because of an issue that someone else did, not me, but someone else did, they're just going to do a random drug test on everyone just to be safe. Well, obviously, on my random drug test, it's, I'm you know I'm not thinking anything. I'm not going to try and lie about it. I, I take a drug test, and it says, oh, yeah, you had weed in your system. Yeah, three weeks ago, on my week vacation, oh, well, you're fired. This is a drug-free zone. I was never high at work. I was never on weed at work. And I'm. that's what I'm trying to say is people, that, that happens to people all over. I've known people that that shit happens to, and that's fucked up. Because if work, because like you never allowed to be drunk at work. However, you take that test. Oh, well, it looks like you had alcohol in your system from the night before, but it, that's just from last night, not today. You're good. Okay. How is that any different? How the work cannot dictate how I spend my days outside, and if I, as long as I'm doing something illegal. Now I get it. If you drug test me and it shows fucking molly or ecstasy or cocaine that's an illegal substance in the, in the united states and in washington so yeah yeah that can that can be understood because i'm doing something illegal in the state of washington if you find weed in my system honestly i'm sorry to say 
but it is illegal. It is, well, it should be illegal for you to be able to fire me. Now, that's not because I don't do weed. I'm not much, I, I've done it, but it's not something I do on a regular basis. Why? Because one, it's not my thing. And two, uh, there's such, there's so many restrictions between work and other places. It's not worth it in my opinion. But the fact is, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be such a scary thing to do. It shouldn't be, I, I'm afraid to do weed because uh, my work could fire me, even if I'm doing it at my house or doing it outside of work, because that's not fair. Not in any sense is it fair. You ha work, should, work should never be allowed to dictate how you'd run your life outside of work. As long as you come in and you clock in and do your job correctly and you clock out and leave safely, Work should have no reason to dictate how you run your life. And that's just insane how, how and just people are. And hell, I was even talking to people like the Tide Pod Challenge shit. Like, that's what we've come to. Why? Why, why, why? Oh, I don't, I didn't even want to do this session on politics and other stuff. And these are just events going on in my life right now that I'm just, I ask myself, why? Late night thoughts of why would people be idiots? I, I just, I don't understand it. I really don't. And I wish I did. I honestly wish I did. Because I, I want to figure out a way to change the world for the better. I would love to show people a new way, a better way. And I want to learn. I'm not saying I have the answers. I don't. I'm a 23-year-old teenager who lives in a apartment that works a part-time apartment uh, department store who collects plastic figurines um, and just does his best to get by. I am no one who has the answers. But am I really the only one who's asking for a better system? Am I really the only one who questions if the system we have in place is the best system because even I I I, saw, I told you guys in my last video I watched Black Panther last night. Um, there's a mo moment in the movie. Uh, T'Challa looks to his sister, and she talks about how she's making new gadgets, and he goes, "Why are you always tinkering with things that don't need to be tinkered with?" And he goes, "She tells him, I'm I'm updating I'm up doing updates on your on your suit," and he goes, "My suit is fine. There's nothing needed. My suit is best." And she goes. Just because it's best doesn't mean it can't be better. Our system has, I, I as flawed and as, as messed up as it is, has maintained somewhat order and somewhat giving people jobs and security and somewhat. It may not be the best plan, but it's been holding on for the last, what, two, three hundred years? It's doing something right. But... Is it the best plan? Could it not be tweaked? Could, could edits to it? Could not something make it better? Update it for our society. Update it for us and create a better tomorrow for our kids. I think that's what we need to do. And I, I, it sucks that I have to feel like I'm a crazy person just because I I, I want to seek better better system. I want to I want to find a better plan. I'm willing to talk to people about it. I'm willing to sit and learn. And that's the thing is there's so many people out there with such great ideas or creative thoughts that I would so love to sit down and chat with you guys and come up with a great come up with ideas that could help our world. And there's so many people out there who want to stop that. So many people in power with money that will make sure that that never happens. You know what? A coworker of mine, so, um, I was helping move in a uh, a lawnmower. I was rolling it in, and I said, "Why, gosh, you know, these things are heavy, you know, because you have to push them in by hand." And I said, "Why, why don't they make these all electric, so that we could just turn them on and drive? Because we could plug them in at night on charge, and we can unplug them and." You know, whatever we could drive them inside, so they're not so heavy. And uh, my coworker told me, "Oh, they, these things, you know, 
It can't run on electricity, just electricity. It needs gas. It needs oil. It's not powerful enough. And that that's... Like, to me, that's kind of a sad thing to hear because that's actually not true. A lawnmower could actually be created to run on just electricity. I've never made it personally, but I, if, I, I know it, it, if we can make a car drive for two, three hundred plus miles on just a charge of electricity, why can't a lawnmower work for a half hour cutting grass? I'll tell you why. Because someone up there, up top, that owns maybe investments in the company that makes the lawnmower, also invest in money that makes the leather that went on the seat for the lawnmower, who also invest in the company that made the motor, and also invest in the company that makes the gas and the oil. So, why would, why would they sacrifice one or two of those items to make something better when they're making a huge profit already? For them to sacrifice that, they're going to lose money in the company that makes that motor. They're going to lose company in the comp that's selling the oil and the gas. Why would they want to do that? They would lose money. And here's the thing is, if I were those people in charge, I would try to find a better system. I would use that money for better, instead of greed, instead of living your high life lifestyle. That 1% up there, if you ever find this video, you have the power to change the world. Why? Because unfortunately money in this day and age is power. I hope to one day have that kind of money to change it, but I don't know if I ever will. And I hope that I do, but I don't know if I ever will. But you people who do have it right now, you can change the world. So what's stopping you? The status quo? Your, your your status in the, the, the world, your relationships with people. Do something right for once, please. And this is me not trying to insult you, not trying to attack you, but make the world better. Let's help do that together. And I'm willing to do try everything I can to help. I can donate only so much money because I barely make very much money and I can donate my free time. I can donate my knowledge. I, I'm willing to even learn. I want to learn. I would love to learn um, new ideas. I'd love to talk to new creative people to, to, to think of an amazing idea to save this world. If you're watching, please help me do that. Um... Sorry, it's a late night video. If you're watching it tomorrow morning or tomorrow or any day, whatever. Um, thank you for watching. Um, yeah, sorry to get so serious on you guys tonight. Um, hopefully we'll have some more fun this, this, this coming week. I got some cool ideas. Might do some cool gaming sessions this week. So uh, thank you for listening to my interestingly serious rant. I'm sorry if I offended anyone. Um, I really hope that people take my words with uh, a grain of salt. And what I mean by that is simply just realize I'm not trying to attack anyone. I'm not trying to put point fingers at anyone. I'm not even trying to start a war with anyone. I'm just, I want you to stop and think for a moment. Is what you have right now best? Okay, it might be best, but could it be better? Just ask yourself, can life be better? Can can the world around me be better? If the answer is no, then hey, go on life and have fun. Enjoy it. But if you think it's yes, help me help a better world for tomorrow. Help me create a better world for all of us. Thank you guys for watching and uh, I guess Tyler and me signing off tonight. Hopefully you guys have a great night and as always, stay classy. And as in for Deadpool, enjoy your chimichangas. Good night everyone.